Today's topic are NEMA rotor designs. So there are four NEMA rotors, the A, B, C, and D. And you can see I have the diagrams of the rotors drawn out here with the um, conductor bars, the cross-sectional area of the conductor bars, and the different designs of each. And then I have four headings up here. We're going to talk about the starting current of each one, the starting torque, the breakdown torque, and then any main characteristic uh, about each rotor we're going to write down under the, the notes section. So I'm going to write all this in front of me here. Eventually I'm going to get buried in information, but uh, the information is more important than me, so let's start. So the NEMA A, as you can see, the rotor bars are quite large, which means there's going to be a low resistance. If you have low resistance, you're going to have a high current. And the high starting current is going to be around 600% of the FLA of this motor. So that's the full load current. We're looking at percentages of all of these because that's going to change depending upon each individual motor. So 600% starting, starting current for the uh, NEMA A rotor. Now the starting torque is going to be about 150% of the full load torque, whatever that may be. Now the breakdown torque, that's our <coughs> peak torque that's going to be about 200% for this motor. And the characteristic of the NEMA A design is it's highly efficient. So it's the most efficient rotor design. Okay, let's move on to rotor B. Now the difference between B and A is the rotor bars are the same size, but they're brought back from the edge of the rotor a bit and they're embedded in the rotor more, which changes the inductance, or it actually increases the inductance, and that will increase the inductive reactance, which now the resistance is going to stay the same. As you can see, it's the same size bar. So if the resistance stays the same, but now we have more inductive reactance, the impedance is going to go up. And if the impedance goes up, what happens to the current? It's going to drop a bit. And in this case, it's going to drop to 500% or thereabouts. Now the starting torque, that's dependent upon the in-phase current. Well, the resistance isn't changing, so the in-phase current doesn't change. So it's also going to be 150%. And the breakdown torque is going to stay the same too at 200%. The main characteristic of this rotor is it is the most common rotor. All right, moving on to the C design. Now, the C design is quite special because it really has two sets. It has an outer set of rotor bars and then an inner set. In this case, they're connected, but sometimes they're, they're not. It just depends on the manufacturer. But what we have, it's called a double cage design. So we've got outer rotor bars and inner rotor bars. Now, as you can see, the outer ones here are quite small. So smaller cross-sectional area gives a higher resistance. And then we have the larger ones that are embedded a bit into the rotor, so they have higher inductance. That basically evens out, so it's still going to be, the starting current is still going to be around 500%. Now what's going to happen though, the starting torque, which is dependent upon, again, the in-phase current or the active rotor current. Well, <clears throat> we have these smaller rotor bars, so there's going to be higher resistance, uh, especially at start. And that would take another video to explain why that is. But just really quickly, the frequency is high at start, so the inductor reactance is going to be quite high. So the most of the current is going to go through the, uh, the smaller rotor bars, in this case, or the edge ones, the outer edge ones. And uh, that's going to raise the starting torque to 225%. Now, the breakdown torque for a NEMA C is usually right at start. So that will also be 225%. Now, as far as the characteristic, beside it being a double squirrel cage design, because of that double design, it's not going to dissipate heat as well as the, the single cage designs. So it's, um, it heats up a little bit more. So it doesn't dissipate heat or heats up, let's say, does not dissipate heat, you know, as well as the A or B. 
And then finally, we got the NEMA D design. As you can see, the rotor bars are much smaller, which gives us higher resistance. So that'll make the starting current go down even more. So now we have, let's say, 400% of FLA. But the starting torque will be higher because now it's all resistive. And that'll be around 275. And the breakdown torque for NEMA D is the same as the starting torque. So we're looking at 275 again. And the main characteristic of this one, because of the highest starting torque, is it can start hard to start loads. So that's why you'd want this one. So good for hard to start loads. Some textbooks you'll see that they say it's good for high inertia loads, which means the same thing. There are the four NEMA rotor designs. See you next video.